Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was awesome in that running water. There is nothing like catching a giant smallmouth in a tiny stream like this. I became obsessed learning about them, how to fish for them, and I've picked up some tips and tricks that I'm gonna share in this video. I am not a professional at all. This video is meant to help those people that are starting out and starting that journey to learn how to fish for smallmouth in small streams like this. If you are a professional, if you know what you're doing, leave some comments so we all can learn from each other and have a good conversation. If you guys get any value out of this video, consider hitting subscribe and like. I know you get tired of hearing that, but it helps out small YouTube channels like this tremendously. You have no idea. In this video, no fluff, no filler. Hopefully everything that I say is something that you can take action on and you can implement yourself. Let's do it. Today, I'm gonna cover my top five lures that I think you can use when you're starting out your smallmouth fishing journey. I'll also cover how to evaluate a stream and the top five areas you need to target in small streams like this. Then we'll hit the water and fish some of those spots. Probably my favorite lure is also everybody else's favorite lure in the fishing world is the Whopper Plopper. In small streams like this, I use a Whopper Plopper size 90. My favorite color is Loon. It's extremely easy to fish. You throw it out, it floats, you reel it in. That's about it. You can't mess it up. Number two is also an industry favorite, the six inch Sanko. I usually fish it on a worm hook weightless. If I do wanna put some weight on it, I'll put a small split shot about a foot, foot and a half above it to get it down. And what that does is it helps it flutter down to the bottom without being so aggressive. In small creeks and streams like this, you wanna to try to stay away from using really heavy weights like Texas rig, Carolina rig. You wanna to try to keep everything natural and finesse. On the retrieve for the Senko, honestly, I'll just lift it up really slightly and let it flutter back down to the bottom. Lift it up, reel in a bit, let it flutter back down to the bottom. Number three is a swim jig, a 3.8 inch swim jig favorite color is pearl for me and i usually use a 1 8 inch swim bait jig head it just swims through the water like this it looks awesome and i have caught some of my biggest fish over the last two years on a swim bait retrieve is super simple on those as well for me i just slow roll it which means i just reel it in really slow and just kind of let it bump on the bottom maybe right off the bottom or i'll drag and let it sink drag and let it sink and it'll do this motion number four is a fluke it's extremely versatile i fish it on a worm hook just like a senko if i need some weight i'll put a little split shot above it when you twitch it fast it'll jerk like this and look like a wounded bait fish and number five if the fish aren't wanting something big like a swim bait or a six inch senko i'll usually downsize to a ned rig ned rigs are really finesse and they work extremely well especially when fish are kind of picky my favorite is the z-man pb and j color usually fish really light jig head usually one tenth to one sixteenth ounce and on the retrieve for that i mean similar to like everything else just a little drag and drop or with the ned rig i'll also do little tiny twitching like this and that'll cause the tail to flutter Now, when you get out on the stream, there's five things you really, really need to look for. Number one is pools above and below running water. See, these big smallmouth, they don't want to just sit in running water all day long. They like to be in still water that's around running water so they can go rest. And then when they're ready to, to feed, they can jump up in the shallow running water. Number two is water breaks. When fast moving water hits slow, still water, it creates a seam and that's called a water break. And a lot of times big fish will sit close to those water breaks on, on the still water side and they'll be looking into that current waiting for something to float by, waiting for an injured bait fish to float by. They'll jump into that running water from the still water and grab their meal. Because they use, like I said, a lot less energy when they're in the still water versus the fast moving water but the fast moving water is almost like a conveyor belt for food for them they can just sit there be still look in the moving current jump out grab some food whenever they want it number three is similar to a water rake but it's an eddy an eddy is when there's an obstruction or a bend in the stream and it creates a whirlpool effect and a lot of times bait fish injured bait fish will get sucked into those eddies and because that eddy is kind of swirling water large fish 
don't have to use a lot of energy when they're in an eddy. They can just sit there and kind of float around. A lot of times they'll be sitting in those eddies just waiting on something to get sucked in there. Number four is structure. Anything like rocks, mounds, points, smallmouth will love to stick around those because what happens is because rocks in the water, structure in the water, it creates underwater eddies. It creates underwater water breaks. So a lot of times smallmouth will be sitting on the downstream side of a big rock in moving water. The water's moving around the rock and they're sitting in that still water behind the rock and they're just looking left, right, up on bait fish that are getting swept around that rock in the fast moving current. And then the fifth one is cover. That's anything like a down tree, that's grass beds, that provides them protection and some place to stay, some shade out of the, out of the sun. What we're gonna do, we're gonna hit the water. We're gonna try to find those five areas in this stream and we're gonna use some of those five lures that I talked about and try to catch something today. Let's do it. Here's an interesting spot. We got really fast moving water running into this tree. Huge eddy behind there. Huge mud bank. Bunch of rocks breaking the current. So you got multiple water breaks. You got an eddy there, you got an eddy there, you got a water break basically going across from the tree to the rocks. You got another water break after the rocks and a big eddy after the rocks. Another thing I like to do when you got running water and still water, just throw up in the running water, throw up stream in the running water and just let it float down. Twitch it every once in a while, super slow, but just let it float around. A lot of times they'll be sitting in that still water looking out into the running water for something to attack and they'll run out and get it. It's a natural presentation, something floating down in the current like that. And sometimes they'll just be sitting out in the current behind a rock that you can't see, just waiting for something to float by. Oh my gosh, just like that. Oh my gosh. Here's a... Oh my gosh. On that little tiny fluke. Wow. That was awesome in that running water. Wow. Man, that was awesome. In this fast moving water, that is what smallmouth fishing in small streams is all about. So basically, this hole is just what you look for. I saw him jump from over there, under that root ball, into the current, and just destroyed that fluke floating down. See, they sit over in that still water, jump out into the current to grab to grab some food, because it takes a lot less energy for them to sit over in that still water. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a water break that runs right down through there. That tree creates a, a really strong water break. So I threw up in the current, right on the left side of that water break, let it float down in the current, and he saw it and just jumped out from that still water over into the moving water and just destroyed it. That was cool. All right, let's keep going. backwards. Tip. Don't go down rapids backwards. This 
not good. It's called a strainer. All right, I got a limbo. <sighs> One bad move can trigger a bunch of bad crap. It's too worried about fishing that one hole that I got sucked down backwards through that little rapid. I wasn't able to position myself to get around that tree. But you know what? This hole down here looks amazing. There's a gravel bar that runs across the middle of this pool. And then I, we actually have a log sitting on the gravel bar that's acting as covers. Oh my gosh. Holy moly. Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh. Holy moly. Dude. On the swim jig, right above some moving water in this pool, beautiful fish. All right, so let's break that fish down. So we've got running water here. We're in a pool right above running water. There's also running water on the top of the pool. There's a gravel bar that runs across the middle of this pool that acts as, so that's your structure. And then I, we actually have a log sitting on the gravel bar that's acting as cover. So we're in a pool above and below running water. We've got a gravel bar running down the middle. So they're running up on that gravel bar and grabbing their breakfast. And we've got cover that provides them a little bit of protection right on the middle of that gravel bar if they need it. So this is a really, really good spot. Caught him using the swim bait and I was not giving it any action, just slow rolling. That just means I was reeling in really slow right above the bottom. If I felt it bump in the bottom, I'd speed up a little bit to get it off the bottom, but um, he just grabbed it. Let's go catch another one. All right, so this is a good hole. As you can see, we got running water coming into this pool. We've got a pretty steep bank here, so it's pretty deep. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try a Ned rig here, kind of like we did around that root ball with the tree and let it fall down in between all of this structure, all these rocks uh, with the transitions with the mud bank. Just let it fall down into that deep water and just really slowly just, just twitch it back and forth. Just really slowly just drag it through these, these pockets right here. Let's try it. Got him. That's a better one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Come on, baby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he does not want to come in. This. I'm going to lose this fish. I'm going to lose this fish. Nope. Oh my gosh. Oh. On the Ned rig. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. He's beautiful. That's super cool. All right, buddy, I'll let you go. One thing I like to do is throw in that running water, let it kind of float around a little bit, give it a little twitch. And then when you get to the edge of the running water, give it a pull, a little jerk. Because a lot of times fish will be sitting in the slack water waiting on injured bait fish getting carried by that running water, trying to escape that running water. Got him. Oh my gosh. Come on, baby. This is a good one. This is a really good one. He's caught in that cover. I gotta get over there. Come 
I'll get out from under there. Come on. Oh, I'm gonna give this a slack. Oh, he's a little one. Oh, he just got caught up in all that junk. That was a lot of drama for you. He was laying in this cover. There's a gravel bar coming down. It drops down. There's cover and it transitions to rocks right here. So he was just laying around in, in this stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. A couple of points on gear before we close. I'm not a big gearhead. I think you should use whatever you have. The key point is just to get out, explore, and find interesting water. If you don't have something, get a cheap combo from Walmart. My favorite setup is a six to six and a half inch light to medium pole with fast action. Usually fish eight pound test mono, Maybe sometimes I'll do 10 pound, but I usually like to keep it light. But use what you have. Get out, enjoy it, explore. That's what it's all about. Once again, I appreciate the view. If you keep fish from small streams, please be responsible. Know that if everybody kept every fish they caught out of small streams, it would absolutely destroy small waterways like that. And pick up your trash. I'm absolutely tired of everybody leaving litter everywhere so if you see something pick it up even if it's not yours we've got to take care of small streams because it does not take long for one to be completely destroyed by us so i appreciate the view as always have an amazing day thank you